Hi everyone, uh, Sweaty Jen here. <laughs> I'm finishing up my 2.1 mile walk this morning. Um, I haven't walked in a couple days. I haven't, um, I've had a lot of deadlines from mom stuff that I need to get done. Um, and it's now d done. Well, mostly I I'm waiting for to hear back from a couple emails first. Um, I spent basically two days behind a computer typing and um, I'm not exaggerating where it was like 9 a.m. until take a break for dinner and then go back on. Uh, and I know stuff had to get done and it's time sensitive, um, but was not listening to my body really. I think I was just so in the zone. And that's how I get about work too. So I've been thinking about like the time I have left before I go back to work. I'm going back in about four weeks, four weeks from Friday. Today is Tuesday? No, today's Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. Um, so I'm getting close to week eight. Um, I was, I know I'm a week behind on the vlogs when I was posting. Um, and it's interesting when you are a week behind and you're watching where you were a week ago. And I want to spend today really focusing on the things that I can do. Um, I did a lot of work on myself to get to a glass half full kind of place. And this whole journey is a big way to get you into a glass half empty kind of place. Um, so I just want to focus on the glass half full part. Um, I wish I could sit, but like everything is soaking wet. There's like dew everywhere. Um, so I had an appointment, I had two appointments yesterday, uh, one with the therapist in the cancer center who deems me to be sane and calm and have enough bags of tricks. And I really, I, I've heard a lot in the past couple of days that I'm just not trusting my own instincts so much and stop listening to other people because you know what you're supposed to be doing and you know you're doing the right things. You're just not giving yourself enough credit for what you're doing. I used to do that all the time and I got so much better at it. But with this kind of thing, it's like, I don't know. I don't know cancer. I don't know all this stuff. You know, I, I need help. I need help to digest. I need help to figure out what to do. Um, but it was nice to hear that. So my big step forward with him is that I don't see him. I'm skipping a week, so I don't see him for two more weeks, which is big. And I'm like, well, what if something happens next week and I don't know how to handle it? Because no matter when I talk to him, he gives me some little tidbit of something. And he's like, you have to start walking your own walk. <laughs> like I'm healing emotionally, <laughs> mentally, physically. And I need to start, you know, removing the crutch a little that I don't need the crutch because I can do it on my own. I don't mean independently, I mean like, I need to start trusting my instincts more with my healing than what I've been doing. Oh, there's people coming, damn it. Um, I don't need strangers seeing me crying. Anyway, so um, I don't see him for two weeks and that'll only be me seeing him twice then before I go back to work. But the reassuring thing is that um, he's not going anywhere. I could see him whatever I want in the process, which is good. Um, he's there. I don't feel like I'm being abandoned or anything. And then, um, I had an appointment with nutritionist yesterday too. That was super interesting because I've had a lot of bodily things going on, uh, in a positive way that I'd love to share with you because <laughs> I'm actually wearing a top that I haven't put on in years because it hasn't fit me. And now that my boobs are um, a little bit smaller and perkier, it all of a sudden fits me. This morning, I took out um, two dresses that I wore to Vegas when I turned 40 and when I turned 41, I think. I went there like three years in a row. Um, and they're like, you know, skimpy, whatever. And I'm like, oh, I forgot I have these hips now, which actually don't look too bad. It's just different from what I'm used to looking like. Um, but I was able to get them on, which was great because it takes a lot of pulling and the pulling again is something I have to be conscious of with my arms. Um, and because they're skimpy, there's not a lot to pull over my neck. <laughs> so, uh, they're both cowl necks and they're both the kind of dresses that you wouldn't wear a bra under because it wouldn't fit. You'd have to use like pasties or something like that with. But I'm like, I don't need pasties because I don't have nipples. <laughs> 
so I tried them on and one of them is like a darker blue um, and that one was fine. It's more of a classier dress. The red one is not classy. <laughs> but the red one has a very deep cowl neck and I'm, I have a little bit of weirdness about in between my boobs. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll show out here. <laughs> like in between here, you know, I have my practical sports bra on, but then I have this over it, which has a shelf. It's like a cami that has a shelf bra in it, um, or a shelf, whatever you call it. But it's, it's, it's compressing because it's a little small. <laughs> But it was a little bit of finagling to get this on, but when I put the um, sports bra on, I felt like there was a little bit too much give. I've lost a lot of weight, and I was concerned that um, it was a lot of weight in a relatively short time. But after talking to the nutritionist about the changes that I've made and um, all the stuff that's been going on, she said she's not surprised that I would have lost that much weight in that much time. So right now I'm about, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 pounds more than I usually am, um, which I'm fine with for now. Like, I'm not worried about the weight. I'm just worried about how I feel and, you know, does make me upset when I have, like, clothes that I just can't get on anymore. I'm much more nurturing with, your bot with my body, and I guess I have to say at this point in the whole process, and it's I feel like it's a smooth transition. It was kind of like a boop. And it was that boom after I watched those YouTube videos of the mastectomies and of the reconstruction. And I only watched the ones that were the kind that I had because there's so many different varieties of what people can do. Like I didn't have expanders, you know, I, I you know, where the scars are. I wanted to watch videos of people that have procedures that were just like mine so I can understand what was happening on the inside. Since I watched those, and yeah, it was tough to watch, but then, the, like, after that, I felt very nurturing with my body. I didn't feel like these, I mean, yes, they're foreign, but it's like, I always feel bad for them. I always feel bad for my body because it's been through so much. And then, like, fast forward all this time, when I see me, like, losing weight and, and fitting into clothes that I haven't worn in, in years, it makes me feel good about my body again. I've been having a lot of body image stuff going on where I don't feel womanly because of what my breasts look like. And I know that will take time and I'm apparently an impatient person. <laughs> but like six months is a long time to just watch day by day. And when you have these appointments with, you know, whatever doctors or therapists or nutritionists or whoever it is you're talking to, they, um, my appointments are pretty much either weekly or, or every two weeks, except for like the big guns, like my oncologist and, and plastics, those are, you know, more spread apart. But the other people that I talk to routinely are reminding me like where I was the last time I talked to them. And I don't really see that because for me, that seems like it was a week ago, like I don't remember where I was a week ago, <laughs> except for the vlogs. <laughs> but they see it because they can step away from it. You know, it's like when you live with someone all the time and like you don't notice little things anymore because you see them all the time. And then when someone else sees them, they're like, oh my gosh, your son's grown so much. And I'm like, oh yeah, but when you're seeing them growing, like, you know, very incrementally, <laughs> you don't see it as much because you see them every day. And, um, so it's empowering to have those conversations where um, they see how much has changed even in the week prior. And I've heard that for the past couple of weeks. Like, remember where you were last week? Like, remember where you were that you couldn't be on a computer for even a half an hour? And they're like, now you were on it almost all day. Granted, that wasn't the best choice because I have tremendous <laughs> discomfort going on. <laughs> So I know even like when I go back to work, I think a smart thing for me to do is, you know, work two hours, take a break, come back to it. Um, the walking is such a big, big, big help. Today I walked to the point of actually sweating. I haven't like had to wear one of these in a very, very long time. I was able to get my pace up that I could walk to the point of sweating. 
And my motivation this morning was when I went to the, to the gas station, they have punch cards. I take it out, but I'm all like strapped in. They had punch cards, which I saw that said, you know, buy six coffees, get one free. And their coffee is just disgusting. But it's a goal to get over there to get something. It's better getting a coffee than it is to get like, like those, like Drake's cakes or something, which they have right next to the coffee. Um, so I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to do that. And he punched one of them, can keep, you know, going back. And then I spilled my coffee all over the counter. And then he gave me my change and I spilled the change all over the floor. I'm, I'm still not one with my body because I feel like a klutz and I, I, I am just, um, are not coordinated, I guess, with, with my movements. Um, so hearing from other people about how far they've seen me come, I'm like, I have to step back and realize that myself. Um, and I'll talk physically first, because I can see it even in my face. Like, I don't know if you guys do, but I can definitely still see it or see it in my face that I have, you know, my neck isn't as crazy fat as, as, as what it was. Um, I am very protective of myself when it comes to the sun. When I go out to walk, I'm walking right into the sun and it feels nice on my face because it's refreshing. But then if I get sunburn and the stretching and all of that, I don't want to get sunburn. As pale as people thought I was before, well, you're going to see a whole new side of pale because I have no desire to be out in the sun. I was out in the sun a lot last summer and then like I get these freckles that just like will never go away. <laughs> um, anyway, so like I on the way back, I had it unzip, but like now I'm one of those people that walks like this, even if it's like warm outside because I can't I can't get sunburnt. I can't have the stretching. Um, when I woke up this morning, um, my right boob hurt a lot. I, I think it's just still something I have to get used to with sleeping without a bra on. Um, and I'm at a more comfortable angle, so I'm able to sleep for longer periods of time. The tamoxifen and the night sweats are just, ugh. Tomorrow, I thought it was today, but tomorrow's my appointment with my oncologist to talk about uh, whether or not, I'm pretty sure they are, but I'm gonna start me on the Lupron and the aromatase inhibitors. So I'll hear what that plan looks like. And I'm actually excited to do that. I'm excited to force my body into menopause. Who knows what that will bring? But um, I truly don't think I'm that far out from being menopausal anyway. Um, yeah, I still haven't, I've gotten one period since surgery and um, that was September 3rd. It's now October 13th and I haven't gotten one since. So uh, yeah, they're super sporadic, whatever. We'll see how it goes. But it's not worth the side effects of the tamoxifen. I'd rather actually have this plan and it works out in, in many ways. But so I had a lot of pain in my right, right breast and still, I mean, I don't know, I can, I wish I could have my tripod, but I don't. I mean, damn it, I don't look like too shabby. <laughs> I look at myself and it's like some people are like, oh, you'd never know. This is actually just bulky because I have my thing here for my little fanny pack. Ugh. So if I move my fanny pack for a second and get into like what I normally would look like, you know, like granted, um, I don't know how much you can see here, like granted, like this has padding on it. And again, I can't feel, can't feel, can't feel, can't feel, um, can feel here. Plus there's padding, so I wouldn't be able to feel anyway. Um, but like it has, my left side always has a nicer curve on the outside, but like, look at my hips. Like my hips are just like, they look normal. Like, even if I go to the side, ooh, that's interesting. That's a good exercise actually for my right arm. This side is still a little bit weird. I still have swelling on this side here. Um, my right implant is just being weird. <sighs> like this one is falling very more naturally. Um, you know, it, not that it's saggy or it just looks more normal where this one is still like up high. Um, my feeling is way better. Um, I, I haven't had like the pins and needles and stuff, but my feeling here, it's like, you know, I can touch it and it's okay. But when I'm laying back at night, oh my God, it's so uncomfortable. Um, and then I go sit up and, and part of it with my abs, cause like, damn it, I think my abs look pretty damn good. I can't get a good angle. Let me switch to the other side. I can't get a good angle just cause of my arm, but my left arm is better. I think that like, you know, granted I have my fanny pack here, so it takes up <laughs> space, but like that's not too shabby for like, you know, hips and compared to what my weight used to be like. I like that view right there. And my legs are still like super skinny, whatever. I've always had like really skinny legs. Um, 
but I feel good about my body right now because of what it's looking like. So my stomach is a combination of a couple of things of why I'm losing the weight. At first I thought it was concerning that I lost that much weight in such a short time because I think it was like, I lost like six, six pounds in a week or something and uh, or something like that. And it was a little alarming. Um, but it's not like I was doing anything, you know, I wasn't like vomiting, I wasn't like going to the bathroom a lot, like, I don't know. Um, it wasn't really a matter of even swelling, but um, maybe my uterus knows that something's gonna happen to get rid of the fibroids that are in there and it's just like, okay, let's just cut her a break. I have no idea. Um, I have been having two cups of coffee in the morning, not necessarily caffeinated. The decaf, or the, the caffeine helps me when I have headaches in the morning. Um, but what helps me also is just getting my ass up out of bed and going for a walk, which sometimes in the morning it's hard. I, I, <laughs> I've rediscovered online gaming on my phone, which I have to really stop doing because it's so, it's such a freaking time suck. Um, but it's something I could do electronically where I'm only using my fingers and not using my hands and I can rest it on the pillow. So I feel like that was my way of rebelling against having to use a laptop if I could just use my phone. Uh, but then I, it gets boring. I'm like, why am I even like doing this? I have been doing my exercises. Um, I'll, I, can, I, I keep saying I'll say that for another vlog, but I will. Um, the exercises, I, I can't get past. The first one I think I'm good on. The second one, I have to cross my hands. Well, imagine my two hands and go like up above my head. Kind of like when you do, uh, what is that? Half moon for yoga. But half moon, your arms are pretty high, and I can't, I can get there with my left arm, I cannot get there with my right arm. Um, and then the next step after I get that one is putting my hands behind my back, which is big. I have not put, I can't, I can't put my hands behind my back. My left hand, yes. My right hand, no. Um, that will be big. And for whatever reason, I am um, procrastinating with starting PT. I got the script a week ago. And I thought, um, I thought I would just call right away. And I, I think part of, well, at the beginning I didn't call because I'm like, I'm just gonna take a break. It's just one more person. And I know even though PT is helpful, it also hurts. Like I know it's gonna be straining. When I do my exercises, it's straining. I don't do it to the point of hurting, but I do it enough that there's such a stretch. My left side, I'm comfortable with stretching. My right side, there's a fear that I have that I'm gonna stretch something wrong. And I'm sure that that's not actually substantiated, but that's how I feel. Um, and then like, I wanna do some research, not crazy research, to find out what the best place is to go. There's a place literally next door to my apartment that does physical therapy. Um, I've heard very limited reviews, but what I've heard is not anything super stellar. But then everyone has different experiences and it's not like they were going there for the kind of exercises that I need to have done. So I need to call them. Um, there's like three places in town. One's kind of far, one's right by work. So like the, the one next door and the one by work would be the most practical for me, but I don't want to think about practicality. I want to think about like what's going to get me into a space of being able to move comfortably. So um, I'm overthinking that totally and I just need to get started with it and not put it off. Um, so today I'm gonna take a peek online, probably call them and ask them, um, cause I brought that up with, with, the, with the therapist yesterday from the cancer center and he's like, you could just call them and say, hey, do you have someone there who's worked with people that have gone through this before? You know, duh, that's a pretty simple question to ask. Um, and they might say no, they could say, no, we specialize on like shoulders and knees or something. And then I know, and then I can move on, whatever. There's plenty of places here, um, but I've been pushing it off. Uh, but I have to have it started within two weeks because my, that's what the order says. It has to be started within two weeks. So, um, yeah, so that's where I am. Um, I know I need to shower when I get back inside. I also changed my morning diet a bit too, which I think is held with the stomach. Originally, um, when I was having so much GI issues, the plan was to have uh, um, two eggs, uh, whole grain bread, and like a ton of fruit. And hopefully that would just like push things into, you know, moving along. That did not work for me. Um, 
and I'll just share my tricks of the trade after all these years of having GI issues. Uh, the fruits that they recommended were things like um, like kiwi or, or cantaloupe or honeydew or um, blackberries, oranges. And I don't usually even eat oranges. I thought that would have a big difference, but it didn't. Um, the coffee has been the most helpful, but I have to be careful because the acidity with my teeth, because yeah, I still have that crack on my tooth that I still have to deal with. And I don't want to have more acidity in my mouth and it's going to like ruin my teeth. Um, oh, so what, so I went to talk to her yesterday. We're going to tweak that for a bit. I remembered, because there's been so much crap going on with my health. I remembered what, after the kidney stone and stuff and, and when things were going well with me, um, I had blueberries like all the time. Uh, blueberries, blackberries are great. Um, having roughage and a lot of fiber for me actually doesn't work for ha making my system go, even though I know that's not what's supposed to happen. Um, bread, I remember I didn't eat bread for the longest time. Um, got rid of carbs, you know, like the bad carbs. Uh, I did, hadn't eaten pasta for about a year. And, um, you know, I'm eating a lot of pastas and, and rice is okay. It's better than pasta, but a lot of empty sugars. And um, I'm not used to eating that way. So I'm like, maybe I should just stop with the bread for a little bit. And I stopped with the bread for about three days and switched to granola with berries, like just a bunch of granola in a bowl with oat milk and blueberries, and blackberries. And I was a whole new person after like a day. So um, that's how I used to eat. And I just forget because there's been so many modifications to the way that I eat. So I am happy with how I look. I am happy. What else can I do? I'm happy that I can do my laundry. I threw some in before I went. Not literally threw. I tried to... Um, I've been using these little sheets that you pull apart. They're like eco-friendly ones. I have to say they don't work super well in getting your clothes actually clean. Uh, but it's better than nothing. They're easy to just rip off a thing and just throw in versus the other ones, like, you know, I usually buy a bigger thing of detergent and then you press the button and it goes into the cup. I thought today, I'm like, okay, let me try. I went to go press the button, which I could, not thinking that I have to line up the cup directly underneath. And of course it wasn't. And then there was detergent all over the place and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> um... I unloaded the dishwasher this morning. I'm able to wash dishes. Um, I still can't water my plants because the ones that are high I can't reach and I'm not comfortably comfortable being on a stool. I've been trying to increase the amount of, of weight that I'm holding. That's been really hard. And actually one of the things that um, I was told to focus on with physical therapy is to ask to do stuff so that I'm able to take groceries up the stairs. Um, I don't know what's going on and I'm trying not to take it personally but the sign up genius for people that are helping me um no one's signing up anymore <laughs> I don't know what's going on I had no one to get groceries this week um I mean I know I can I can go through Instacart or go through Amazon with Whole Foods and stuff but they jack their prices up and um I have to say at this point like it does start to financially add up with the amount of money that you're spending in co-pays and all these other medical things, things you have to, you know, had to buy in order to, uh, you know, go through this process comfortably. Um, it's starting to add up and uh, I have to make conscious choices about what I'm, you know, spending my money on. Um, so yeah, I don't want to have to do that, but I'm, I, I also want to try to just, if I can do things in small increments. Um, the driving has not been going well uh, I went to the post office. That was like, oh, I don't know how long ago, and I haven't driven since. Today, I'm going to take the car and go to uh, drop off some Amazon stuff at the UPS store. So we'll see how that goes. And then tomorrow, I'll be out. So I'm um, driving a little bit too. I have to get in the habit of doing that more frequently. Um, an easy thing to do is to drive your kid to school. The problem with that for me is the roads... <laughs> The roads in Massachusetts as a whole are ridiculously curved. They're not gridded, like, at all. Um, there's forks in the road that go to forks in the road that go to forks in the road. So there's a lot of turns, and turns are not easy for me. So uh, I'll work my way up to taking him to school, but um, right now that's not at all what I can do. Um, and I think that's all I got for now. I don't know. I'm going to go inside and eat. Um shower 
which I'm not, doesn't make me sad to shower anymore. It makes me nurturing to just wash them and clean them. Um, and even if they don't look perfect, aside from the scar, I mean, even if they don't look perfect, I'm like, why would I expect them to look perfect? Like, look at all the shit that they've been through. Holy cow. So that's where I am. Um, just as an overview, I'm going to hit day 100 on Saturday. Uh, I don't have my son this weekend. So like, I don't want to hit day 100 and be on my own. <laughs> I, I just don't want to. Um, I don't want to. So I asked a friend of mine, um, who I haven't seen in a long, long time, but she's good energy. And she uh, offered to pick me up and go leaf peeping, which is Massachusetts talk for going to watch the trees change colors in certain spots. Um, and I want to do something destructive yet healthy with my old bras, something to commemorate the fact that it's been 100 days since I was diagnosed. Um, so it's a big deal. There's a kid coming out here with a scooter, so I'm going to get going. Um, but after day 100, I might just go back to doing this like once every week or so. We'll just see how things go. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.